re-bienvenue euh, en salle Vasari. Du coup, euh, comme on a modifié un tout petit peu le programme, on va vous pré pr proposer une vidéo euh, de Nanette Baumer du Rich Museum. Donc, je vais laisser Pierre-Yves euh, Lochon vous euh, présenter l'entretien qui a été prévu, qui va parler euh, d'open content euh, dans le contexte du Rich Museum, le bilan en fait. On a la chance d'avoir un retour international, on parlait du retard français, là il faut en profiter. Euh, une vidéo de 16 minutes et ensuite on pourra rejoindre Camille Françoise qui nous parlera justement de la question des licences dans le cadre de l'ouverture des contenus. Euh, pierre je pense Merci, que tu peux commencer. Merci Monsieur Xavier. Tu... En 2012, le Rich Museum était l'un des premiers grands musées d'art en Europe et dans le monde à adopter une stratégie open content. Il lançait alors le Rich Studio un portail de sa collection permettant le libre usage, même commercial, des reproductions de plus de 500 000 œuvres tombées dans le domaine public. En 2022, le musée a fêté les 10 ans de cette stratégie d'ouverture et le Rich Studio propose aujourd'hui plus de 772 000 œuvres et reproductions d'œuvres et affiche près de 700 000 utilisateurs réguliers à cette plateforme de collection. Dix ans après le lancement du Rich Studio, il nous a semblé utile de donner la parole à une institution étrangère. Nanette Bummer, directrice du marketing et du numérique du Rich Museum, n'a pas pu être avec nous aujourd'hui. Mais nous l'avons enregistré il y a quelques jours pour faire un bilan de l'open content au Rich Museum et nous, et nous parler de ces nouveaux projets innovants. My uh, French is uh, not that good, so I'm going to do my talk in uh, English. I'm not a, a native speaker, but I will do my best, of course. Uh, my name is uh, Renette Bermer. I'm a head of digital and marketing at the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. And uh, well, you may know the Rijksmuseum, but we uh, opened our doors in 1885, and we tell the story of 800 years of Dutch art and history from Middle Ages. Uh, until now, and sometimes people ask me, are the old masters uh, still popular? Well, yes, they are. Two years ago, uh, we had a big exhibition in the Rijksmuseum, and we asked our public to send in their own masterpieces inspired by the uh, old masters like Rembrandt and Vermeer, and we made a whole exhibition about it. So yes, they are still uh, popular. And uh, I, mentioned, uh, I mentioned this to uh, a lot of museums around the world. Uh, we have a strong belief in digital strategy, and uh, we always say we want people to engage worldwide with our collection. We believe in long-term conversion, and for us, an online visit is just as important as an offline visit to the Rijksmuseum in Amsterdam. And uh, what we uh, do online is make their journey complete. So we don't care if you go to uh, the Rijks Museum in 10 years or uh, maybe uh, tomorrow. Uh, we want you to see the Rijks Museum and the collection, maybe Rembrandt's Night Watch, with your own eyes uh, once in your life. So everything that we do online is really focused uh, on that. Ten years ago, already ten years ago, uh, we launched Reich Studio uh, because we think that our collection belongs to the world and we want everyone to enjoy it and be creative uh, with it. So I think uh, three uh, things are very important for us when we look back at it. It made our collection more accessible for everyone to, uh, to enjoy. So uh, uh, that is a uh, that is a good takeaway, but also it increased innovation. So uh, making the, uh, the collection more accessible, it really helped uh, people to do all kinds of stuff with it, not only um, content-wise, but people made uh, uh, AI applications of it, but also uh, video content, uh, numbers of tooling uh, in our collection. So that is a good takeaway as well. Uh, and of course, uh, it increased impact. So it was not competitive with our physical collection, it really brought something as well. For example, when we look at um, 
And the Vermeer exhibition in the Rijksmuseum at the moment, we created a whole online experience in our collection uh, for it. And it really helped people going to the exhibition to get more content and more uh, context of uh, Vermeer's life and his paintings. But it was also very helpful for people who couldn't come to Amsterdam and really enjoy the art as well. The Rijk Studio has uh, more than 600,000 um, accounts at the moment. So not everyone is that active, of course, but we do have a lot of active uh, members. Uh, but we also have a lot of people who just make all uh, sorts of uh, uh, collections uh, um, in the Rijk Studio itself. So don't, they don't have accounts. But what we uh, do with this online community is um, we communicate uh, with uh, newsletters. We have a lot of subscribers as well. Um, so we, we uh, share a lot of content stories with them. And in, those, in these online communities, we have communities, uh, for example, for the old masters, for Rembrandt, or for Vermeer, or for flowers, all sorts of themes. So you could say they're all, it's not one uh, community, it's uh, micro communities that make the one uh, Reich Studio community. And those communities communicate um, themselves as well. So we don't have a real part in that. We have uh, a metric that we created ourselves, an uh, engagement metric, and that is the sum of uh, clicks. Uh, and interactions that we measure in our stories uh, platform and that stories platform we uh, launched uh, almost two years ago so we have a stories platform and a uh, rack studio uh, but what we also measure is uh, time spent uh, and we uh, uh, compare that worldwide so the time spent in our online collection our rack studio is now i think five or maybe six minutes that is pretty long when you look at uh, the attention span online in different uh, channels. I think in Instagram it's maybe three uh, seconds. <laughs> so really short. So we are really proud of um, uh, the spend time metric. And we measure that and compare that to other museums uh, as well. Um, so the, those two are the most important ones that we use for uh, content and collection. Entirely. Uh, but we do, of course, measure that, and we um, primarily look at search engine optimization. So the keywords that you use uh, to find artworks that belongs to the Rijks Museum. For example, uh, the, the, the highlights or the masterpieces that we have in our main gallery in the Gallery of Honor. Um, so we do a lot of uh, uh, optimizations on that. So people use those terms to make collection items out of it. But it's not entirely uh, measurable because people don't always use those names or our name. So, uh, but like I said before, uh, that is not uh, our uh, uh, main uh, goal. Our main goal is to spread the collection of the Rijks Museum around the world. But because we say it's not ours to keep, we, we only keep it. It belongs to the world, so we want everyone to enjoy it. So for a certain amount, we can measure uh, how many people use it around the world, but not entirely, because we have to use, we have to have those keywords uh, to measure that uh, well. In our best year, 2019, we had almost 3 million visitors uh, to the museum in Amsterdam, uh, but we have almost 6 million visitors online every month. So uh, uh, the, those are completely different uh, numbers, of course, and it may have changed a little bit uh, in the last month because of uh, uh, the Vermeer exhibition and the Vermeer exhibition that we also made online, uh, but that is correct. So 3 million in good years to the museum and 6 million uh, monthly. We have a lot of website visitors as well. So the 6 million uh, is a sum of uh, different uh, uh, digital channels, of course. We have seven social channels already, so a lot uh, uh, to focus on. In fact, it influenced uh, the whole organization, uh, that belief. 
that the collection is uh, ours to keep and it belongs to the world. Uh, not only management, but also, for example, curators. Uh, curators nowadays in our museum um, uh, really uh, are interested in what people want to know. So they make, of course, beautiful exhibitions, but they are also interested what is most popular, what are uh, themes that people really like to incorporate that also in content uh, that we make. So that is uh, really different uh, nowadays. But uh, honestly, I think Right Studio uh, plays a part, but also uh, this time, the past Corona time, really influenced uh, the way that we look uh, at uh, open data and uh, uh, the outside in approach. Opening up the collection has a lot of advantages. Uh, and I totally understand the marketing part, of course, but you could also say uh, opening up the collection really helps your marketing. I'm a marketing professional at heart for more than 15 years. It really helps marketing because people already know these images. And then you can uh, get them to convert even faster. So like I said before, we believe in long-term conversion. For example, if you download Rembrandt's Nightwatch and you make beautiful <coughs> curtains out of it because you really like curtains in your house, we hope that one day you open them and you say, I want to see this with my own eyes and book a ticket. So everything that we do is really focused on that and, and opening up it helps converting someday. So uh, I think it's very positive that people do that. And uh, you, you talked about control. Control is uh, something uh, that you nev can never ma manage. And uh, now when you look at all these social channels, people really want to make their content for themselves, their content creators. So as a museum, you could really support that um, and, and it helps uh, to get people even more engaged uh, for your museum and for your collection. So I think it's, uh, a, that is the positive way to look at it. Open access is um, important in the awareness phase of a brand. So you need a lot of awareness, a big funnel to get people converted. So that really helps uh, on top of the marketing funnel. Uh, and the value, the real value of a museum is the brand, of course, but also all the knowledge and expertise that is in a museum, that is worth a lot of money and you can monetize that. So what we're trying to do in our museum is uh, to make a, a good combination of uh, the content that we have, but also, for example, uh, seminars or the exper experts on um, uh, for example, the night watch, all the research that we do there, there we make a, more, a beautiful seminar out of it and we sell a seminar online with the content that we already have, but with our curators and our experts talking about that. So that is very valuable for uh, a museum. So yes, you can still monetize when you have an open data policy. In fact, it is even better for the engagement because you really focus on the people that are already engaged. And on top of that, you add uh, the brand and the expertise and the real knowledge of the museum. I think this is a problem in every museum, small teams, small budgets, uh, a lot of uh, ambition, a lot of uh, projects. Uh, but in the museum, we have uh, uh, a, big, a big project group working on the new Greg Studios. So uh, Greg Studio is now 10 years of age in April. So we think it's already old uh, and we need some updating on that. Not only the digitizing part of the objects, but also on the user experience because a lot has, has changed in the behavior, in the online behavior of users. So uh, we are working very hard on that. Um, so we hope to launch it uh, uh, hopefully next year. So I can talk about uh, that uh, next year with you, of course. Um, so that is a big project. We do a lot of AI testing in the museum. Uh, we do a lot of uh, testing with fish, visual search. We also launched a, a big VR tour 
for elderly homes and hospitals. So people that are, aren't able to come to the museum, we try to bring our masterpieces to them uh, through VR using. Uh, so that is, I think, in short, uh, but uh, like any other museum, we have uh, small tests on content, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So these uh, projects that I just mentioned are uh, uh, the main focus of my team right now. Well, the main focus of the museum is that the technique is never leading. So the user is always leading. So the, the visitor of the Rijksmuseum uh, wants, just wants to enjoy uh, the art. So if it helps to bring VR to the museum or uh, a nice audio tour or a Snapchat filter, then yes, of course, but it's not leading. So uh, um, the user experience for us is always uh, the most important one and not the user experience of one, but of a group. So uh, that is, uh, uh, I think that, that is leading and our main focus. And that really helps uh, all the agencies that uh, want, want to work with us and uh, all the offers that we get of people who want to develop uh, new tooling, AI tooling, VR tooling with us. So we always ask our community, our visitor, what does really help with your visiting the Rijksmuseum? It's a, a tool that you need, um, but it also could be on paper. Uh, it's not necessarily a, a technique that we want to use. Yes, yeah, so for the Rijksmuseum, an online visit is just as important as an offline visit because um, uh, we hope that someday you will come to the Rijksmuseum, but there is a big audience that may never come, that lives in Brazil, that lives in Australia. We're just a small country. Uh, and uh, in fact, we don't care because we want everyone to enjoy it. And I think uh, making online experience like the Vermeer experience really helps to engage with people all around the world. So for us, it's a nice add-on. And uh, before I started at the Rijksmuseum four years ago, they said, well, we just want everything to keep in the museum when it comes to exhibitions. Don't give it away online. And I think after Corona and nowadays, that it is totally different because uh, making uh, things online is a nice add-on for people that come to the museum and want to enjoy it afterwards, uh, but also for people that don't come because it's sold out or because they can't buy a ticket or another plane ticket, it's too expensive to leave the country, et cetera, et cetera. So I think uh, that is uh, how we can engage with the new audiences uh, as well. So digital is not competitive. It's an extra value for every museum around the world. Voilà, merci Anna Annette Bummer de nous, nous avoir accordé du temps partager son, euh, son expérience.